Hey girls, I love what you both do. Thanks for doing it. Thank you. So I don't know how to do this. Please forgive me if this gets long. I don't know if you answer your questions in video format or not, but if you do, feel free to condense this. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> That's extra work. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> I'm in my early 30s and my romantic life has always been non-existent. I've had one weird, long, friends with benefits type partnership and that has been my only real involvement with a woman. I don't know what I'm doing or where to go from where I am now that that's over. Or where to go from where I am now that's over. Dating terrifies me. I've been fatalistic about my prospects for most of my adult life for several reasons. First, I have been socially isolated for a long time, living on the margins of society as a neat, not an education, employment or training. During that time, I pursued personal hobbies and educated myself because I didn't feel like I could adjust and reintegrate into society or that it would benefit me to try. To add to this, I'm back to living with my mom in the fucking suburbs for financial reasons. As an anarchist, I feel really out of place. There's nothing to do and nowhere to go nearby. It's impossible to relate to the people here and their bourgeois interests, but there's no exit public, there's no exit. public transportation sucks and I don't have a car. I feel like no girl in this city would ever be interested in me because of my non-conformity and low social status. I downloaded the app Happen just to see and not a single girl has liked my profile over months. I wasn't too surprised since I'm being straightforward about being vegan, anti-capitalist, anti-work and all that and they're normals as far as I could tell. <laughs> Previous to that I tried OkCupid and I received some interest but again from normals only or women that I found unattractive and I didn't end up connecting with them. I'd like to meet someone with whom I could really connect, ideally someone who is quite cerebral like me or engaged in activism and who could get me to start becoming more involved in direct action, etc. I feel like I'm not going to find such a girl around here for sure and probably not anywhere if I'm being honest. But let's say I solved a transportation issue and could get out of the suburbs. How should I go about finding a girl who might be interested in someone like me? I have nothing to show for myself other than the fact that I'm well educated, moral and lucid. Are there girls who would pay attention to someone like that? And if they exist, would it be a deal breaker if I live at my mum's place, at least for now? I'm not a big baby. I was away from this house for 10 years. I know how to take care of myself, but I know how it looks from an outsider's perspective when you're living with your mum in your 30s. I mean, there's a lot to unpack. You yeah, sure yeah, we should yeah. say it once? Sorry? I, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm ready to, but we can also put them in batch and then sort of come back to them. Or I feel like we'll miss the detail. I think we should just launch straight you're in. You're okay with that? Yeah. yeah? Okay, dogs. All right, let's do this. Right, okay. So, um... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Again, thank you so much for opening up to us. And it does sound like, you know, you're in a fairly desperate situation, etc. However, quite a few things in that question I either disagree with or like I think um, could be um, you are sort of in the vortex of kind of feeling, feeling sorry for yourself as such. So uh, first of all, um, and that will tie in in some of the future questions that we're going to get. But um, uh, the whole like oh you know people are just normies not everyone posts their political opinions on dating apps I know I don't like I mean really because be and the way that you sort of project yours it's intimidating man someone is like oh I'm like vegan anti-capitalist like anarcho whatever like people might just find that a bit a bit too much as well as you can change people's opinion like you can change people's political opinions so yeah, yeah I want to deal with all three of those points sure. actually because yeah. I had similar feelings so the first one Calling people normies, to me, makes you not seem likable. Totally. Sorry. Absolutely. Like, I know what you're saying. I also like to date people who are political. That's fine. But you're not better than them. Nope. Nope. And that's an attitude that I would not swipe right on. No. Like, I don't know don't what you Don't date normies. Yeah. Like, all right. I don't know what you said about what you're interested in. Like, whether, like, I'm interested in... Political girls, fine, fine thing to put, like, fine to say what you're interested in, but, yeah. Just referring to people as normies? Yeah, like... it, it, it comes across as a little bit more righteous than thou, totally. which is not like... an attractive attitude. And that ties into Mariam's third point, which is that every single person I've ever been with, I have, like, in some way, like, improved their politics, and they have in some way improved mine. Yeah. And that's what makes it work. And to write someone off because they haven't like read the same texts as you or had the Zines. same perspective like it's yeah that's like yeah you can make people more political if you want to and if they want to and it's I, to me it's more about whether someone's receptive to being politicized totally than... and also what were you born with these politics Precisely. no you weren't you're like okay you educated yourself eventually to to be that and um what has you know what has that done for you like i mean i don't know like it's just 
you still seem to be like a fairly desperate situation as such so like I don't yeah. know that sounds bad but like I mean basically like you you seem to be a super righteous whereas people that perhaps haven't necessarily like fell into the hellhole that sometimes a political scene can be you know they they I don't know they they maybe a, a, a sometimes you know achieve more in different ways and then and then there is a space for them to learn all those good yeah. things you know and hopefully you can be that person for them um, yeah, my politics are constantly changing and growing and becoming better. I think like it's not. Yeah, and definitely like I d I've dated like people that were yeah had totally just liberal politics and yeah. like like were totally into police and charity work and all of that stuff. And I remember we used to have arguments of, over it. And they like they met a few of my friends. They went to a few demonstrations. They kind of saw how things really are, and they've opened up for it. And now they're like more ACAP than I am sometimes. Yeah. And like as well, I wanted to be a fucking cop when I was fifteen because I thought that was the way to help people. You know what I mean? Like. And now look at like, yeah, you would have you would have swiped left with me as a normie, and it's like I mean hopefully you swipe left girl fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> But you know what I mean? Like, just maybe try and be a little less condescending in your approach, especially since, yeah, like you say, you said one of the things you want is a girl to encourage you to get involved in more direct, direct action, which makes it sound like for all that you might consider yourself X, Y, and Z politics, you're not actually doing all that much, which is fine. But then maybe this girl who's doing direct action is like, what a fucking normie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, on your middle point about the vegan, anti-capitalist, blah, 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 being intimidating, that's true, it can be intimidating, but to me it can also be like, is this someone who's gonna, like, I was a, look, I was a vegan for two years, and I fucking hated <laughs> vegan culture, and people that talk about being vegan, like, fucking hell, yeah. like, if you wanna meet someone who wants to talk about being vegan, go on fucking Facebook and join, like, the vegan groups, you know, like, that would yeah, make me think- Yeah, don't put that on your yeah. profile, it's like, well, unless you really, I mean, I dated someone who was like, because I, I fish sometimes when I'm in Russia, you know, they were like, if you're going to fish, like, I'm not going to date you anymore. So that definitely will happen. Well, I kind of didn't stay for that long. Yeah. But, um, so, like, it's fine to have your politics, and it's fine if you put your principles out there, but be aware that that might not be seen as, like, ooh, cool, political red guy. As much as, like, this guy is super, like... Condescending. Uh, yeah. I don't know, yeah. Okay, so also, and this is a point that we keep repeating over and over again but because i now have a bit of experience with like these uh these you know dating apps and all that stuff i cannot stress enough how important pictures are oh my god like seriously invest in some good pictures ask a few friends to take a few of you filter them make them cute so many people that as you know we repeat now ourselves also many people that i know could be so gorgeous like just make kind of shitty pictures and like mm -hmm. i don't care that much and the other way around people they're like you know maybe don't have this status they're typically gorgeous features they're they're you know their confidence or just yeah. in general like they have really i know beautifully set up pictures and i'm like yeah i'm yeah. into this yeah well, i guess we don't know what your pictures are but like if you don't seem approachable people aren't going to approach you yeah and the way in which it sounds like you've written yourself and described yourself and the way in which it sounds like you're judging other people yeah yeah so maybe yeah have a think about your pictures we have previous videos where we talk about aesthetic where we talk about what to put on a tinder profile yeah. literally in the last show we talk about that so now to do with more a bit of a practicality stuff of things so look this is completely subjective and personal but i will say for me someone living with a parents isn't is like a deal breaker i know no completely and the reason why i'm saying this and the reason why i'm confident in saying this is because i was in the same position and you know what i either squatted or fucking did medical trials to fucking be able to rent or stuff like that you know so like there are ways to get out of that and i'm so now sounding smug or whatnot but like i don't know like i think there are opportunities out there as such it's, yeah especially if you were to move to a bigger city or whatnot to to like not be there as such so i think it is a bit of a closing where is he cycle based, though? is he based in the uk because like yeah squatting is possible here. i mean it depends on where you are right yes for sure and also like i don't know uh, if you can because I'm just, I'm so smug these days. No, but like, if you can pass driving license, like, that would be amazing. Yeah. And if you can have, like, it, the cars are well cheap these days. And yeah, as I say, there, there are, you know, there are um, extras work. There's like, well, I mean, there's so many, there are like gig apps. I mean, and I went through all of these things. That's why I'm saying that there are, they actually exist and you can actually run the door. So your hours contracts, that sort of stuff. Like, it's all terrible and capitalism sucks. Yes, yes. Like, we cannot stress this if enough. If it's like, like a line for you and if you're realizing yeah. that girls don't want to come back to your house, it depends what's more important to you, basically. I had like chunks that big, like cut out of my, my vagina for like a couple of thousands of pounds three times, you know, because I was desperate, you know? So like, I'm saying this literally because like, I. And that money then helped me to like get to a better situation. Mm. So, I mean, 
yeah as a neat i don't know maybe you just like power through for a year in a job and like just like get yourself out of that situation i would yeah. say for me like I-, i wouldn't date a guy that lives with their parents okay like, well I see i did and the maybe if it was prince william well, <laughs> Well, oh, the, the, the parents house with of the Buckingham Palace. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's a house like that yeah. big. Wait, well, well, this is the thing. Like, I was um, casually seeing someone that lived with their mum, and it worked because they came back to my place. But because I was casually dating them, and we weren't, like, in a relationship yet, like, fuck did I want to meet their parents? Like, he was a lovely boy. We, like, had a really nice time together. But, like, I've, like, you know, slept with you three times. I'm not going to say hi to your mum and dad yet. It's too intense. Like, it's... And like, yeah, it's like maybe normal for you, but it would it would put me off and I would end up having them only come to my house, which it creates an awkward yeah. dynamic again. Because again, we lived like quite far away from each other and it was like very much the power situation was not good. And being late 20s, early 30s and having to like hump next door to one's yeah, parents, it's, it's just like, like that was the only good thing about like stopping being a teenager. Oh, there many good things, but like, <laughs> yeah, not hearing my boyfriend's parents watch The Simpsons while I'm having sex next door is a pro. Yeah. I mean, maybe you've got a huge house and you have your own wing of it, in which case it's a different situation, <laughs> I guess. Like, and again, purely subjective, la la, but you've asked us and I'm just giving you my opinion. Like, yeah. Again, we're not experts, never never said we are, but like from our, from my subjective opinion, mm. that's all. And it's also because I have like worked so fucking hard to get out of my parents' place. But I mean, like saying that like, if you don't have that opportunity, I'm not saying you won't find a girl. I'm saying that you'll probably not find a girl that wants to come back to your house. In which case, yeah, being able to drive, being able to put in the... Like, if you haven't got a job or whatever, being able to put in the hours and committing to staying at her place or, I don't know, maybe rent a motel for the night or whatever. Like, there are other ways of doing it if you don't have the capacity financially or, I don't know, mentally or something to leave your parents' house. I'm also really interested, what are you educated in? Since you're saying, you know, you spent a lot of your time if you're 20s to, like, learning and you're, like, well-educated and that's what you're saying. Like, perhaps there are ways for you to send, like, really cool, like, trivia to, to your, you know, to people that perhaps hopefully you'll finally match and match with yeah. and that sort of stuff you know like there's nothing quite like someone sending me a, an adorno quote i'm like oh. are you serious <laughs> depends Man, that would like... be a hard left swipe for me <laughs> i still don't know which one is which because i use the right x is and you. yeah oh, fucking boomer <laughs> <laughs> so yeah left okay, is bad x. right is good okay gotcha we i mean i okay the, but like they're gorgeous and they're like clever as fuck like come on Come on. If the first thing they say to me is sending me an Adorno quote. Depends on the Adorno quote, but there's so many good ones. Depends on the quote. (laughs) (laughs) If it's the Adorno quote saying, hey babe, do you want to get lunch? Then I'd accept it. (laughs) Citation Adorno. That'd be funny. Three most interesting facts about you. Actually, I've been utilizing that one. It's been interesting. Yeah, it's good. And everyone's just saying really boring things. And mine are really interesting. I'm like, I'm so much better. (laughs) Is one of yours that you're a sex therapist? N- uh, n- no because that's what? like what? It, you know what the reason why because like people then would just like assume that i'm only on tinder for those reasons oh yeah or like or like when we went to that pub and that guy was like oh yeah yeah hence hence you're gonna like want to be with him or yeah. something no yeah no we've done our research we don't need more yeah. case studies yeah um, okay are there any other i think that's that's me covered hang on let me just have a quick scan Yeah, I feel like no girl in the city would ever be interested in me because of my non-conformity. <laughs> that's not true. But if you're identifying as a non-conformist, that's not cool. <laughs> <laughs> like, look, we're both like political, but like... Yeah. yeah, what makes me like someone is... Like, yes, they have to have good politics, but that's not enough. But, like, they have to be funny and charming and interested in me. And so far, you've said that... They're all normies, all girls you find unattractive. Is there anyone you've been interested in, actually, their personality or anything? Yeah, it's a lot about you rather than, like, yeah. like what you're into. But also, like, um, I don't know, it just really reeks of me. It's like, I'm such an individual, you know, like, I'm, I'm just, yeah. Yeah, it's so very self-pitying. Well, not like, just pitying, but also self-grandizing at both. the same yeah. time. <laughs> Which is impressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I think, I doubt it's because you're not in education, employment or training. I would think about how you're coming across on these dating apps and what you're coming across as not political and cool, but that's great. I believe you that you are, but likable. Also, like you talk about your so you know socioeconomic status and that sort of stuff. Like, no man, like working class people date too, and um, and, and are political, have <laughs> go, good sex lives, and are political. And like, I don't think anyone would like not date you because you're working class. Like, yeah, I mean, some people might, but then there are people you don't sure. want to date anyway. So yeah. who cares? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I feel like we've come across as quite harsh and. 
we're trying to have empathy and we do have empathy with the situation it's really <laughs> shit when you get into a spiral of no one will ever like me or whatever like for sure but, but we've also met those met those boys you know that do just think that because they can, yeah, because they can call Adorna at you that mm. like every other girl or every other person is like not good enough for them, you know? Yeah, that's the thing. Don't use your politics as a way of making yourself think you're better than these normies. And most of these normies are probably really fucking interesting. Okay, say, say you know, she's a Labour voter. I was a Labour voter. You can turn a Labour voter into a radical. You can turn a fucking Lib Dem into a radical. Well, that's leading on to the next question, actually. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. If you want to send us some follow-up questions or feedback aren't you excited in educating someone i am like mm. come to think of it like the best relationships that i've had like didn't involve someone as 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 rad as me it's always that sort of like they teach me about like i don't know technical things to do with i don't know fucking i don't know computers or whatnot and i teach them about like class politics or whatnot yeah. it's just like it's great i mean definitely i mean like my first serious relationship i learned a lot very very quickly but i still had stuff to teach them in terms of like feminism and yeah, yeah, yeah. like how to <laughs> not hit on a girl on your first date and stuff like that like yeah and it's funny and it's fun and it's you don't know everything and I'm sure you know that and nor does she and isn't part yeah part of the fun is like what do you know what do I know maybe she isn't super into Adorno what are you picking on Adorno I don't know yeah but she actually That's knows a shitload about I don't know the life cycle of marine animals sick I want to know about that totally quantum physics or yeah. like car mechanics yeah so yeah give give yourself a break for the like neat stuff and give other people a break on the political stuff and I think you'll do much better. We don't have to turn it off but I'm just just gonna check it off. Yeah, no, no we're not turning it off. We got told off for cutting. So this time if I go to the toilet you're just gonna have Mary. Oh sorry, so many boobies. Which is nice. Yeah, looks oh looks banging man. Cool. Okay. So moving swiftly on. Mm-hmm mm-hmm mm -hmm. Oh god okay okay. Oh you just cable Hi, I'm a 19 year old cis straight guy and I'm autistic. I have no experience with dating or relationships. Nearly all of my close friends are women. I have no problems talking to women, but as soon as I feel there may be a potential for a date or something more, it becomes nearly impossible to keep up a conversation. I've become very aware that uh, I, struggle, I still struggle with conversation and I'm scared to bring up my politics uh, as a large number of women at my uni will be Lib Dems at best. <laughs> I've tried dating apps but have been ghosted to no end and I worry this because I'm not flirting and I come across as, uh, as desperate. I've become increasingly worried I'll be alone forever and then scared that implies that I could be an incel. Do you have any advice for organizing a first date and as a first step before I start worrying, oh as a first step, before I start worrying about sex and relationships and all the rest of it? I mean I like this question a lot. The first okay. thing I would say is we have one about how to date um, when you have Asperger's, which please, please, please watch. Yeah, because we, I know it's, we know it's a different ball game and that sort of stuff. But, you know, there are a few tips there that... In that terms are... of, like, social anxiety, not knowing what to say, that covers a lot of basics. Yeah. Um, other stuff... I mean, I don't know, to me it's a bit similar in terms of, It is of similar. Like... So that's why we're putting them together in one video. We'll do oh, that. Yeah, yeah, sorry, we will. Um, bits I would talk about... Um, Nearly all my close friends are women. I have no problems talking to women. That's really great. And that's actually a really good sign that a lot of your friends are women. That means you're probably, like, you're worrying about becoming an incel. And that those two things together show that you're probably a really legit guy. Yeah. Because incels don't worry about becoming incels. Yes, yes. Um, right, in terms of first date ideas, because I think that was kind of the main, the main question, um, if, if someone is potentially interested in you. I always find street drinking really fun. Like, and when I say street drinking, I don't just mean, like, on any random stoop and that sort of stuff but you know like parks canals um you know river fronts some crazy rooftop some you know some yeah some terrace so yeah gardens so yeah i i love that stuff even in the middle of winter even in the middle of rain i don't know mm. something about that to me see what i was thinking which i mean i love that stuff too but like say like you're worried about making conversation some things i've done as like first dates are kind of like nostalgic quirky things which don't involve too much talking so for example open top bus ride go to an aquarium totally go to like a museum and laugh at all the nudes you know like things where there's there's the conversation starter is already in front of you 100 percent. so if you're worrying about your issues or like or running out of things to say there's like oh my god look at that dolphin or like do you think it's problematic we're in an aquarium you yeah know. there's some you know some modern art galleries where there's mm. like art pieces as experiences mm. so you sort of already have stuff to uh, yeah. get on with so like there's and like i would find it very charming if someone said instead of do you want to come to mine babe said like hey do you want to go on an open top bus ride i'd be like fuck yeah, yeah. that sounds ridiculous and sick yeah. and fun yeah or ice skating yeah yeah so like bowling bowling anything where there's a th a thing what you're doing 
totally that isn't just like hello hello yeah 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 no to be fair that's true as in it's even street drink it can be a bit more that you but, know, but you look at the people. aquarium yeah 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 or you like you kind of talk about people or you mm. talk about i don't know there were there were a few times birds decided to give front like give birth to eggs in front of us really? so that was this whole thing yeah Whoa. swans actually <laughs> fuck how big are the eggs fabric yeah yeah and it like gave birth to it literally in front of a baby's us. head like is it harder for swans than it is for us no i think it's smaller but it's just so like out there mm. and it also like it's it's much harder right mm. so it's like in here it's just like oh oh god imagine carrying around an it was quite traumatic the yeah. first day and everything <laughs> that could be us one day <laughs> oh Oh, then the other one, like p- one pigeon assaulted the other pigeon. It's this whole thing. The nature is it's tough. Or urban walks as well. There, there's lots of amazing. You, yeah, I mean, again, we're not sure if you're in the city, but there's so many amazing urban walks that will literally take you from a place to place that that are of interest mm. as such. Uh, yeah. Those. But wasn't it was it actually first date ideas or was it how to have a first date? And don't judge this, the people I just live them. It's like I do more than the next person. Believe me, if you look at my Twitter profile, like yeah. all I do is I bitch about lip dams and Chakomona more than I bitch about Tories a lot of the time yeah. because there's something about lip dams I find repulsive. And Chakomona yes, is a terrible person. <laughs> yes. And yet, though, like as we always, yeah, as, as we say, you can change one's politics. Like if, if you know, if 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 they're fit and open minded and have good humor. Just because they're Lib Dem, like... Yeah. Oh, and you can start with that conversation, like, oh, why do you identify as a Lib Dem? And then be like, but don't you find it, like, problematic, that X or Y? And yeah. Like, you know, you can actually... Because a lot of people who identify as centrist, identify as centrist because they see the left as, like, this scary thing with, like, radical politics, and they don't realise that radical politics means being nice to each other. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It's just the status quo. They are not necessarily yeah. that interested in politics, and that's just then that ends up, you know, what they're kind mm. of into and that sort of stuff. So yeah, but then again, look at the one we just did in terms of like political opinions and stuff. Yeah. Because and do not worry, you will hundred percent find the right person. Everyone always finds the right person. You're still super young as well. Like Absolutely. I know, nineteen might feel like you're behind everyone else. Oh my god, they're nineteen. Yeah. Jesus Christ. I'm sorry. Look, sorry, but I'm now reacting like this. But babes, you'll be fine. Yeah, you'll be so you have fine. You have female friends. You're clearly know how to talk to women. I know you said that's not the problem, but like. That's great because then they'll recommend you to their friends and they will like, you're a dude that is trusted by women, which is really fucking cool. You're not going to be an incel. It's kind no. of like the sorting hat in Harry Potter. Like, <laughs> even if like, you put that hat on you and it's like, hmm, you could be an incel, you know, an incel should show you the way to greatness. You can be like Harry and be like, dear hat, I don't want to be an incel. And then you won't be a fucking incel. <laughs> you're, you're, that's that's perfect. Yeah, of course. <laughs> also, I don't know what... Um, the, the, I think there are a lot of women out there that are into like dating younger people. What if you took this time to for, get, for perhaps go on like mm. dating apps get potentially and like literally just like go and really date like all the women that will perhaps like teach you all the tricks and then you can use them on like whoever else because like but maybe that's there's what we're doing right now. We Sorry? are the older women teaching him all the tricks. Yes, of course. No, but I mean women. like even people in like I don't know people in their thirties, people in their forties. Fuck it, like they've been around the block. They know how to use the. So like just learn, <laughs> just learn the that? tricks, and then <laughs> and you can then um, you know maybe you can then uh, apply it to someone in the future. Mm. Just use this time to like, you know, please and learn and and uh, yeah, yeah. And watch our videos about how to do sex to k- totally subjectively because also yes. that doesn't hurt being good at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you said not, you know, don't want to worry about that, but yeah, first eight ideas I think we covered. Yeah, no, there's so much. I think you hug. Oh my god. You have so much time for like education. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. You sound super nice. Yeah, because we were talking about this recently, right? So it's in like, how come like, like sex in early twenties was so crap, and it's because no twenty-something dude knows what the fuck they're mm. doing, and then in your later twenties and hopefully in the thirties as well, it just becomes better. It's not because you're dating like better people. Well, it's just that everyone's aged and now they know what they're doing a bit more. Yeah. So if you can be like 20 years old and like know what to do, like that will... I mean, top tips, give head, have lube. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, Be yeah, consensual, yeah. obviously. Like well, yeah, 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 check yeah. in with the person, make sure yeah. they're doing all right. Watch our um, videos about social cues and like how to not be creepy if you're unsure about reading signals. Neck, yeah. nipples, bum. Lower no, back. Not for me. Sorry? Not for me. Gotcha, gotcha. Mm. Fine. Well, yeah, you see, so it is subjective. It is subjective, but you, but know, you can ask that stuff and you can figure it out. Like, for sure. Yeah. Wait, that's good. Okay. And so then to sum up the last two questions. Yeah. Hey, do you think it's a good idea to only date leftists? I think we just answered that one. Yeah. yeah. Like, if you want to, that's fine. I pretty much do, but that's because I'm in quite a lazy and intolerant place right now. And it isn't to say I wouldn't not do that in the future. 
uh, I, I, I'm absolutely vehemently saying no mm -hmm. because mm, the non-lefties end up being more loyal. <laughs> Whereas yeah. the lefties are full of themselves. <laughs> and a lot of lefty dudes don't think, they think they already know it all. They think they know how to do oh, feminism. Yeah. Yeah, they yeah, think yeah, they yeah. know everything. Like if you're, if someone is open to learning, that's much more attractive to me than them being like, oh, I got anarchist, man. Yeah. Also, lefties are, they have no style. Well, to some people, I guess it's attractive. Sure, fine. <laughs> 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 Fucking fine. Yeah. I mean, that'll be fine. They don't use moisturizer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sorry. I am not sure, actually. That's so annoying. Actually, my... I mean, I, I, th I know one lefty who definitely uses very expensive moisturizer that we probably couldn't afford. <laughs> Introduce me. Well, you, the, uh, you know who I mean. Moisturizer. Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, I'm but almost hundred percent sure he uses moisturizer. Love him that. I yeah, no, exactly. That yeah, him. he's doing it right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, not to say if you don't use moisturizer, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Moisturizing is a political project. <laughs> <laughs> You'll thank us one day. Mm. No, but I had yeah, lots of people sneer at me. As in, you know, I've been I've been bought by the capitalist class because mm. I use a moisturizer. Maybe. Uh. But I feel so supple. Yeah. Also, it's fine. People still want to fuck me. It's okay. Have oh, great. Thanks. Anyway, so, <laughs> okay, that was the batch of three that were kind of the same. Um, this one I don't actually understand because it's not really phrased as a question, but maybe you can... Oh, yeah. Okay. Q for agony Q for agony ons. Looking back on my hookup and relationship history, I can only find two. And then they were, and they were long ago when I was sober, when first kissing, slash being sexual with them. This is really common among friends I've compared notes on this with, and I don't feel I'm okay about it for the most part. But if I were to try, if, but if I were to try break this pattern, I'm not sure I'd be able to. Right, couple of thoughts on this. Although this, this is not much of a question. In the future, if we can ask people to like phrase actually, it as a question. Yeah, this is more like a comment. So two things for me are interesting about this. First of all, that you compared notes with friends and fascinating that it wasn't uh, basically i like your friends already that no one goes like yeah like i just i, I just like i fucking everyone i have all these relationships i'm like so satisfied and happy and all this stuff and like what are you not because in the in the real world it's like this and it's really dark so yeah, i'm so glad you have was, yeah sympathetic and, yeah. and you're all in the same boat and everyone's like well, how is it for you how is it for you that's fucking brilliant and then the next the, the next thing sorry are you, is, is that is that okay? Yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's, it's the heat on my face. Oh, Anyways, we're fighting, like, the eggs. second one, I wanted to mention it on one of the previous shows, but I never got to. But it's like a story. And look, this is the story is way more like out there than the actual question. But I just want to use it as an illustration as to the the sort of cycles that people kind of end up in. So um, I was listening to again. I was listening to this podcast, and it was talking about how. Um, I think the, po the, the podcast itself was about the porn industry and about the stigma around it as such. But then the producer that was, th th someone that was like, uh, I guess, uh, recording it as such, um, they admitted, I don't remember where it was them now or their friend or whatever, someone who they knew, um, that they have issues with, they can't necessarily go to the toilet at anyone else's place or at anyone or like in public places in cafes or anything like that uh, so only at home and they also have a housemate and they can't do it when the housemate is at home as well so they would literally take a 20 minute drive to go to work um, to do it there and then come back home or they like they wouldn't drink all day it's just it's it, you know it's 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 a certain it became a phobia like. yeah 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 which is also way more common than people would mm -hmm. think actually absolutely so uh, but basically they so then got into the cycle of things uh, and became so embarrassed etc that they wouldn't date and they would keep the secret but it because it, it became such a secret then they became dirty and then like because they felt dirty they thought that the only space for them to be is like watch quite intense porn to in order to sort of kind of punish themselves mm. but not really and then it's just basically now I'm talking through years and years and years and then they're guilty that they're watching this porn but they have this issue and it's just like it became a, a problem that one could have hopefully just talk to their partner like and have it you know there would be trust in that sort of stuff snowballed into them like yeah then she was born uh, only 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 uh, seeing sex workers as well so not dating only seeing sex workers and snowballed to the same but then the oh yeah it wasn't the watching of the porn it was the sex workers and I'm like 
into this vortex where they were like um, then embarrassed over that. And basically, so what I'm saying is that don't allow any of the issues that you may have right now to then snowball to the point where you don't think that you can ever have a relationship or anything like that because, um, yeah, hopefully that won't be the case. Well, this is... A, this is yeah, yeah, so don't get into that pattern as such. If you can get in, out of yeah. that pattern in whichever way or form that is. Because, okay, I want to, like, ask you, because I find this question quite confusing. Mm -hmm. So they're saying they've only had two sexual partners. It's not a question, anyway. No, but they only had two sexual partners and they were a long time ago. But they're referring to the, the lack of sexual partners as a pattern. Yes. So it's not really a pattern, it's just like an acceptance of, of like it never nice happening. Spell, pretty much. Yeah, but like accepting that that will be forever, right? But they also say, I'm not sure I'd be able to break it and I don't feel bad about it. So do you want us to help you to start dating again? Or are you happy with not dating and you want us, you want our opinion on it? Like, well, I think they're saying that like, they've now are learning to be single and like, they don't think they'll be able to give that space away. I mean, look, it's fine if you want to be single forever. That is a completely fine thing. And I would never like, you know, as long as you're not like an incel about it. Um, but when we say incel, we mean the bad misogynist ones, not like people that are actually just struggling to date. Yeah, no, no, no. But if you like, if you're not developing an unhealthy attitude towards women, shall we say, in a flirtation with you all right because of that, then I don't see there a problem with being OK with being single. And it seems like you are OK with it. I do find it interesting, like, like on the one hand, yes, it's really nice that they shared us with all their friends. Yeah. On the other hand, I do find it interesting as an entire friendship group that has kind of accepted singleness as the status quo. Have you accepted it because you're scared of trying to date again? Because we, yeah, we like I said, we have lots of videos about how to date, or are you, have you accepted it also, because... Also, is it just all dudes, I wonder? This is the thing, there's not really enough information about, like, age, about, mm. about really how they feel about it, about who the friends are, to ask, like... So maybe we can just say, like, try and formulate it into a question and send it back. Because yeah. we haven't really got that much to say at this stage nope, because it, I can't really tell what your attitude is towards it. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So.